Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm gonna to show you how to wall mount anything. To showcase the three different methods of mounting, I have three different objects here to help showcase it. The first is this overhead light, the second is this entirely 3D printed and post-processed Stormbreaker from Avengers. Chris put this together. And then last we have this charger for some of the batteries that go to our film equipment. So the first method utilizes the contour gauge and calipers in order to measure either end of the overhead light. So we can get a pretty approximate representation of that shape and able, we'd be able to make a bracket that fits on the end of it a lot better than just kind of creating a box that slides on. Now for Stormbreaker, since that's already 3D printed, we have exactly what this model was built from. We have that 3D model, we can use that to create a perfectly contoured bracket to hang this on the wall, rather than just a simple hook that holds this up. And for the last thing, we're gonna use Image Converter within Matter Control, so we can take a picture of the bottom of this and extrude it out, and be able to have a really nice and well-contoured shape that goes with this, and we can orient that however we want. So let's get to it. The tool I'm using here is called a contour gauge, which, much like the name implies, is used to get the contour of your specific shape. So once I had this up against the light, I was able to get rough dimensions of the shape of it, and then I could start sketching over it the actual shape of the light that I needed to fit over. So I started measuring how far in was the little pull switch for it, where does the plug for this go, and just measuring out all the different dimensions I'd need in order to model this up later in Fusion 360. And I wanted to be very accurate with this because this needs to fit pretty snugly over this without a lot of wiggle room. And then with all the dimensions, I could jump into Fusion. So in Fusion 360, the first thing I did was modeled up what does the light actually look like, and then started modeling off of that to make sure everything fits. Now I had to make sure that I made room for anything when it was sliding on, like making that slot for the pull switch and that little channel for the wire to go through. Otherwise it'd be a too big of a hole to fit everything. From there, I needed to start making the mounting solution, which is this dovetailed bracket, which has one part that is drilled into the wall, and then a piece that slides into it from the top, and then the light just slides onto that. That'll make it a lot easier to print this, so I can rely on print orientation and not just print all in one piece, so I can get a much better print quality and things will fit relatively okay doing it this way. So now that that bracket's done, we can look at how to wall mount Stormbreaker. So looking at this, I was trying to decide it, whether I wanted to do one big bracket that goes more towards the center of the ax, or if I would want to go with two. And I think two is the better option because then we don't have, need to have such a uh, big printed part, it can be two smaller ones, and it'll better fit the contours here along the like hammer side of the axe, and then just a small wedge that will fit up in here. Otherwise in here you run the risk of scratching up against some of this um, like twine and even like getting caught up within this little uh, notch. But I think going with a much larger one that goes here and here, but it's just two separate pieces is the better way to go. Now I first went to Fusion 360 and made a model for the basics of this bracket, and then I went to NetFab, which you see here, so I could subtract the axe from the brackets and get the exact shape that it needs to be to fit over it. So the actual bracket itself doesn't need to be specifically shaped, it was just enough room to have plenty of material to then cut away the axe. I could then go into the mesh and manually edit each face, so I could select these three sides and use an offset to pull that in just enough to have a little bit of wiggle room and not really grip the ax and start scratching it up. So this will make slightly looser of a fit, but it'll mean that overall it will be uh, better off for the printed prop. For the charger, I just laid it out in a sheet of white printer paper and took a picture of it using my phone, which I could then use Inkscape to do some image editing. It's free, so it makes it really easy, although you could totally use MS Paint. But all I had to do was just make the outline of it and make sure it was black and have a roughly accurate representation of the charger. Then I threw this into Matter Control, used the Image Converter design app to be able to create it and just scale it up based on the actual length it needs to be to match the actual charger, which I just did with a caliper or a ruler. From there, I started modeling the basics of the charger using a triangular prism and some cubes and started combining them. And then I will subtract the actual shape of the charger so that it has a cutout that the charger can fit into. Now, I needed a way to mount this on the wall, so I designed some keyholes just using some cylinders, some cubes, and some half cylinders, and just combined them all together and lined them up. And then I could subtract this as well from the actual charger mount. Before we get started printing, we need to decide on which filament we want to use. For that, we chose Matter Hackers Pro Series Rhino. It's a co-polyester, which does mean you need some higher print settings, 
but it's going to be really strong and it's going to be really easy to print with, more so than other coat polyesters you might be used to. So something like this will be really great for brackets or parts that are actually seeing use rather than something that's just decorative. So something like a bracket or even printed parts for a different 3D printer, this is some great stuff to use for that. So let's get printing. With the charger, I just did a little test fit to see how well it fit in there, and it was snug enough to stay in there, no problem. For the light mount, I did end up needing to use a blowtorch to kind of melt some of the edges so it could slide in a lot easier, because some of these were a little too tight to rely on, and rather than reprint it a bunch of different times, I just decided to melt it, get it to fit once, and then hang it up on the wall. So it's not gonna be needed to be printed a bunch, just one time works and that's it. From there, I could start mounting the Stormbreaker, and these fit on perfectly without needing any sort of melting with the blowtorch. With this handy jig, mounting the charger was super easy because I could make it level, put the drywall anchors in, and put the screws almost all the way in so they could fit in the keyholes, make some room for the wire to go in the back, and there we go, mounted. Now for Stormbreaker, I used some more drywall anchors to make sure that this didn't fall because that'd be really bad. And on this one, I didn't make a jig and really wish I did because the spacing on this one was really close, but it would have been perfect if I had that jig. In the end though, putting more drywall anchors and drilling this into the wall still was a pretty awesome result. For the light, I measured out where the left end needed to be, drove in some drywall anchors, and then loosely screwed in the mounting bracket. Then I could use the level to make sure it was right and tighten it down. From there, I could assemble the actual bracket itself, slide on the light, and use that to measure where the right side needs to be rather than trying to measure it out with a tape measure. More drywall anchors, mounted it up, put the bracket in, and perfect. Now these are just three of the different ways you can go about wall mounting something, whether it's using Matter Control's image converter, taking the 3D model you already have and subtracting that from your wall mounted shape, or just taking some measurements with some calipers and really figuring out what's the right shape to fit your object. Now, like I said, this is just a couple of the different ways you could do it. So if there's something that I didn't mention that you feel like I should mention or is something that you use a lot, feel free to leave that in the comments down below because I'd love to learn more about it and find different ways to be able to wall mount different projects. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. See you on the next Weekend Build. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.